Hi, in the demo I will present the main disaster recovery operation of Extreme IO native replication. Extreme IO native replication is a synchronous replication that supports an RPO of 30 seconds or more and supports up to 1000 recovery points per volume. Extreme IO native replication has the most efficient replication as it is metadata aware replication, meaning that only unique blocks are replicated. The native replication replicates only the changes that are, we have done between cycles. As XMAO is a content aware storage, it replicates only unique blocks. Replicating just the unique blocks is not just within the protection session itself, but also across volumes and protection sessions. And even more, the global deduplication is also between cluster, just in case of any environment, for any non-unique block, only the metadata is replicated. And in addition, the replicated data is sent compressed over the wire. If a typical data reduction ratio is 4 to 1, the savings on the cluster and on the wire is 75%, and because of XMAO content aware architecture, the efficiency is even more. In the demo, we will see how to create a replication session, how to test a copy at the DR site, and how to perform a failover. The GUI is still in design, and it's not final, but it gives a good understanding of the capabilities and simplicity. Let's look at the environment that I'm going to use for the demo. In the production site, we have host LGDRM2363 connected to XtremeAO X2 cluster XBIG DRM1180. The production host runs an application that uses Oracle database. We are going to replicate the Oracle database to the DR site. In the DR site, we have host LGDRM2367 that is connected to XtremeAO X2 cluster XBIG DRM1182. To make it simple to understand the status of the application and the production host, at the DR host and to understand the state of, of the protection session at the cluster, I have created a web page that retrieves the information from the host and the clusters. The web page refreshes itself every 30 seconds, so every change that will be done will be displayed in the web page. We can see at the left top side the configuration that we just uh, saw. At the top right side, we can see the product table that we retrieve from the production host. Currently the application is up and running, so we see the information. At the bottom right side, we can see the product table that we are retrieving from the DR host, LGDRM2367. Currently the database is down because there is no data on the DR host. It will be available only after we will replicate the information. And also after starting the replication, we don't expect to see any information until we will test the copy at the DR host or whenever we will perform failover. At the bottom right side, we can see the protection sessions. Currently, there are no protection sessions defined. Let's go now to Extreme IO GUI. First, we will go to the source cluster, XBIG DRM1180. In XBIG DRM1180, we can see that we have two CGs defined. We will use the ProDB CG as our CG for the replication. The ProDB CG has two volumes defined. Finance Vol 1 and Finance Vol 2, which will be replicated to the target array. Let's go to the data protection section. In the data protection section, we can see at the top the data protection summary. Currently, we are able to see that there are no protection sessions defined. And also, in the details pane, we are able to see that there are no protection for any of the cluster objects. Going to target array, XBDRM1182, we are able to see that there are no CGs defined. The CG will be created by the native replication automatically. Okay, so now we will go back to the source cluster and we will define a new protection session. We will use the new protection session button. Clicking on that will open the wizard. We are able to select if we would like to create a remote protection or local protection. In our case, we will select remote protection. We will select the consistency group that we would like to replicate. In our case, PODBCG. And we will click on the next button. It will take us to the next step in which we will select the target cluster. In our case, XBDRM1182. In the next step, we will select the pairing method and the pair, in the pairing method we have two options we have the auto creation which will let extreme io to define the remote cg and remote volumes for us or in case that we have already defined the cg at the remote cluster and the volumes 
Then we can select the manual options in which we will pair between the source and target volumes. In our case, we will let XTMIO to define the target CG and volumes for us automatically. In the next step, we can define the RPO. The RPO defines the frequency of the protection session. XTMIO support an RPO of 30 seconds and more. In our example, we will use one minute RPO. Clicking on the next button will bring us to the retention policy. Uh, we are able to select a retention policy from a list. The retention policy defines the protection window and the number of snapshots that are kept within the protection window. And we are able to define up to three time periods. And per time periods, we can define how many snapshots will be kept inside. Clicking on the next will bring us to the summary page. The summary page will show us the information that we have selected and we have two options. We can select the finish in order to create a protection session but without starting the replication. We will be able to start the replication later and uh, maybe off hours or we can select the finish and start protection button which will actually create a protection session and start the replication immediately. Before clicking on the button, let's give the protection session a name. We'll call it ProDB CG New York, New Jersey. And let's click on the finish start protection. Okay, now we have created the protection session. We can see at the summary at the top that we have one protection session that meets the SLA and that's great. And in the details, we can see that we have a protection for the ProDB CG. Let's go to the web page. In the web page, we now can see that we have a protection session. It's called PodBCG New York, New Jersey. It's active and it's replicating from SVIC DRM 1180 to SVIC DRM 1182. The production is uh, up and running. You can see the product table and the application at the DR is still down because we are not testing any snapshot set and we are not performing any failover. If we go now to the remote array, we can see that we have a CG defined, the ProDB CG with the volumes. The protection session has created the CG and the volumes automatically at the target. Going to the data protection section, we are able to see that the ProDB CG has protection now. If we will drill down in, we will be able to see the session itself replicating from expert DRM 1180 to the expert DRM 1182 with all the details. In the combined tab, we have a visual view. The visual view includes all the protections of the CG. It includes local protection and remote protection. In our case, we have just created remote protection, so we can see just the remote protection. Going to the snapshot sets section, we can see that we have five snapshot sets defined. We can see it in the graph, and also we can see it as a list and if we would like to test one of the snapshot sets what we will need to do is to click on the dry run button and we are able to select if to test a copy by selecting the latest snapshot set or by selecting a specific snapshot set from a list in our case we will select to test the latest snapshot set and we will click on the apply button we can see the time that we are performing the test copy and also we can see it in the table for which uh, snapshot sets we are performing test when performing test copy the snapshot set and the volumes are now available and accessible for the dr host what we will need to do is to start the application in order to start the application i've created a script called start application the start application script will mount the file system and will start the database so let's run the start application script. It mounts the file system and start the database. And now the application should be up. In the web page, we are now be able to see that in both production and DR, the application is up and running. Testing the application in the DR doesn't have any impact on the production and not on the replication. The replication will still continue replicating. So in order to check that everything works okay, I would like to update the production uh, database. I will update item number 16, increasing the price by 40 and make sure that everything works okay. I have created a script for that, uh, update item 16. So let's run it and we will see that the information updates. So let's run the script and see that the, the item 60 is updated. And after the web page refreshes, we can see that the price is updated. 
So now we are sure that uh, the production works correctly. If we will look at the application table in the DR host, we are able to we will see that the price is the same as it was before because we haven't changed it yet. We are using still the snapshot set that, that we have selected for the testing. Let's update the item 60 again to make sure that everything works. And after the refresh, we are able to see that the price is updated. We made sure that everything works okay. Now we can stop the testing. Clicking on the finish button will stop the testing. Going to the web page again, we will be able to see that the production is up and running and the application in the DSO host has stopped. Last thing that we would like to do is to perform failover. In order to perform failover, we can click on the failover button and we will have four options. The first option is to failover to the latest point in time. The second option is to select a specific point in time for the failover. The third option will be used whenever we have tested the copy, made some uh, recovery operations, and we are good with what we have mounted on the host, and we would like to failover to the currently mounted snapshot set. So that's the option three. And the last option is switchover. The switchover switches the roles between the production and the DR making the DR to be the production and the production to be the DR without losing any information. In the demo, we will fail over to the latest point in time, clicking on the finish. Okay, so now if we perform the failover, we now can see that uh, the protection session now replicates from XBIG DRM 1182 to XBIG DRM 1180. We change the direction. We can see it also in the visual view. Let's go to the Combine tab and we are able to see that we are replicating from the cluster at the DR site to the cluster at the production site. In order to complete the failover, we will need to start the application at the DR host. Uh, so we will use the same script that we have used before, the start application. The start application will mount the file system and start the database. So let's run the start application. And the database is now up and running. We can see the product table at the DR host and at the production host, the database is down because we have changed the direction. Looking at the protection session, we will be able to see that the protection session is a failover mode and it's inactive because we haven't started the replication yet. I will do that only after I will verify that the application is working correctly on the DR. So in order to test the application at the DR, what we, I will do, I will use the same script that we have used before, updating the price of item 60, but now at the DR site. So let's run the update item 60. And after the refresh, we can see that the price is updated. In the demo, we have shown how to create a protection session, how to test a snapshot set on the DR host, and how to perform failover to the DR host. Thank you very much.